Hi and welcome to the next Best of Skincare series. This category is on prep steps, so kind of essences, toners, um, acids, that sort of thing. And I'm treating this like a year in review, basically the products that I consider to be the best in class for everything I tried. And as I said in the last video, although I'm calling this a best of series, it's really just my favorites of the year. And I've tried to break this down in sort of categories. So the first one that I have here is the best acid product, which if you followed me for a while, you know that I'm a big, big fan of a lotion P50 from Biologic Recherche and that remains my favorite topical acid of the year um, and it happens to be in that prep step category because it's sort of a watery texture that's what the bottle looks like there I'm sure most of you are familiar even though it's still a little bit of a cult favorite product the nice thing is that Biologique has started to expand a little bit more in Australia because they um, now do facials and things through Mecca stores, especially like the flagship one in Melbourne. So I'm pretty sure they're somewhere on the top floor. Now over in the US, there has been some controversy around Lotion P50 because I feel like most people over there were using the 1970 formula. So there's a little bit of upset that that has now been discontinued. The 1970 formula has been long gone internationally. I guess the US market was sort of holding on to a fairly old school formulation that doesn't bother me at all i think the new version or the updated formula is better it's much more modern the acid composition is better i think the nutrients that it delivers are better so it's just you know without the phenol which i know some people miss but anyway i'm getting off track this is still the best acid around because of everything i just said in that it's exfoliating but it's delivering a lot of like nutrition to the skin so i find it to be very harmonizing and balancing and it actually strengthens and builds resilience in the skin over over time while it's exfoliating. So it can feel a little bit aggressive to start, but once you build up tolerance, then it kind of feels like just applying water because your skin ends up just getting used to it. It features gluconolactone as one of the main sort of PHAs, and then that's supported by lactic acid. There's even some salicylic acid and citric acid and sulfur, and then a whole bunch of botanical extracts. So it's an extremely well-rounded product. And it also has things like niacinamide in there that probably do help reinforce the barrier um, to ensure that it's not too damaging. And put simply, I would consider P50 to be a foundational skincare step with a view towards epidermal reconditioning. It's a watery lotion that gently renews and refines and will help with texture, skin tone, clarity, pores, and just overall like evenness and vibrancy and brightness of the skin. Last thing I'll mention here is that P50 does come in a few different versions. So the one that I use is just the classic lotion P50, but they have an option more for sensitized skin um, and more enriched formula if you have drier skin and even one for hyperpigmentation if your skin is a little bit more sensitive in that way. The next category is what I'm calling best toner. And I actually most often use micellar waters as toners these days. So that's what I'm featuring is actually a micellar water that I leave on the skin. My favorite actually turned out to be the Chanel Micellar Water, which was quite surprising because when I first started using it, um, I found it to be a little bit more hydrating than normal, whereas I was more used to much more watery or thin toners. You know when the thing happens and you just kind of keep reaching for something and reaching for something without really even noticing that you're reaching for it so often? And I just emptied a bottle a few weeks ago. And even then I was like, I'm probably not gonna rush out and buy it. But I actually ended up missing this um, micellar water slash toner so much. I bought it like two weeks later. So I'm glad to have it back in my rotation. So yeah, I think Chanel has just done such a good job of designing this product where it does maintain a lot of hydration in the skin. And even the pump bottle mechanism is super convenient. And I love using that for application. Now I thought I'd also mention a slightly more affordable option. And of course it's hard to skip the Bioderma micellar water as a suggestion like the Sensi Bio I think is a classic for a reason and Bioderma really pioneered the whole concept of leaving micellar on the skin as sometimes being more gentle than actually using direct water and I still consider this to be one of the best micellar waters around the only thing is that the Sensi Bio is a little bit more enriched so you can feel definitely a bit more of a hydrating film on the skin I don't mind that sensation but I would say the Chanel feels a little bit more refreshing and purifying which is probably why I reach for it that little bit more often next up is the best mist category and this is kind of a late release in the year but it very quickly became a favorite product and I'm already onto my second bottle and that's the new Neod superoxide dismutase enzyme mist the third version or superoxide dismutase 3 enzyme mist rather this is just super packed with antioxidants and as I've discussed in dedicated videos for this I really love like the network protection or antioxidant profile because it's sort of like they've built this in a really strategic way where there's antioxidants that work straight away others that help oxidized um, 
antioxidants sort of be recycled so that they get renewed when, they're, when they've been used up. And then even an ingredient here that doesn't really activate essentially until it's applied to the skin. So this is just a super thoughtful, well-designed antioxidant mist, easy to apply, doesn't really interfere with anything. As I've also said before, the, mist, the misting nozzle itself is a little bit aggressive, so it does kind of saturate the skin. So I've tried to be a little bit more light-handed lately, only two to three mists at most. And then it does take a second to sort of dry down just because the mist is quite intense. But aside from that little complaint, I think the formula is pretty perfect. And another mist that I've really enjoyed also on the more affordable side is something that's fairly new to Australia. I'm not sure if it's been out longer elsewhere. It's the Bioderma Sensi Bio AR Plus mist. So as you can see, I'm almost empty this one as well. And I just ordered a backup a few days ago because this is super easy to use. It is a little bit more of a refreshing sort of watery texture. I guess a lot like a French thermal water. But this includes Bioderma's anti-redness complex. So I find it quite a bit more skin calming than a lot of the standard waters out there. So this is another one that I can sort of foresee being in my routine very much long term. And I'm super curious to see where Bioderma goes with this AR Plus range. I know there's a few other products available in Europe um, that haven't started to trickle down elsewhere yet. Um, and I'm very interested to try those. The next category is what I'm calling the best watery essence. And my favorite one of the year was the Sulwasu Concentrated Ginseng Essence Water. Water. Hold on, let me read the name to you. The Concentrated Ginseng Rejuvenating Water, sorry. <laughs> Um, and it comes in really nice packaging, very classic of Sulwasu. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, but the texture here is thicker. So it's almost like a gel, like a watery gel to start. So much less fluid than a lot of other watery essences out there. And they actually describe this as a gel in water, which is the perfect description. It's quite sort of thick upon application, but then bursts into this super fresh feeling. And while ginseng is quite a popular ingredient throughout K-beauty, Sulwasu is one of those brands that really invest in the science and development of what ginseng is and what its potential is. They're very aware of different types and aging practices and when best to cultivate and essentially turn the ingredients into actives. So that's something that I don't think many other K-beauty brands or brands in general actually capture properly. The full rejuvenating ability of ginseng is something that's quite signature to select products. So a lot of the other K-beauty brands that you see around that tout ginseng, I would not, I personally do not have much faith in their ability to actually use the ingredient to its best potential. So that's why when we're talking ginseng and real classic K-beauty ingredients, I think it's important to use like heritage brands that know what they're doing. So this offers improved skin vitality and it's energizing and gives the skin quite a lot of bounce. And the nice thing is this also has quite a few signaling peptides. So it's essentially a well-rounded anti-aging watery essence with quite a unique texture. Now a more affordable watery essence that I enjoyed this year was the multi-active delivery essence from The Ordinary. So this is a little bit more simplified, but it does still contain a well-rounded medley of sort of humectant ingredients. And because it's designed as a specific delivery essence to help the penetration of other actives, specifically I think tested with niacinamide, there's quite a thought approach there. I just don't find it quite as special as something like the Sulwasu, but, but I think a super solid product nevertheless. Next category is the best milky essence, and I'm sorry for including one that's this pricey, but I really love it so much. It's the Chanel La Lotion. So this is part of the Sublimage range from Chanel, which is their kind of most expensive tier. And like with most things Chanel, they're really focused on the sensoriality of their products. But this also offers quite a lot of skin resilience support as well. Now, when I talk about luxury products, essentially what I'm looking for personally is a level of originality and effort in production. So there are some products out there that are expensive that I don't think are expensive for any reason. So they're often just a combination of a bunch of generic sort of widely available ingredients that every brand can use. But what I specifically like about Chanel is that they have partnerships and they grow a lot of their own raw ingredients. So when we look at the Sublimage line, they're focused on a vanilla planifolia extract, which if you look at vanilla generally, it's typically known as a fragrance ingredient because that's how most of the industry cultivates it. What Chanel does specifically is because they're in charge of the whole growth cycle from beginning to end, they're able to actually selectively process this ingredient when the bioactive molecules are at their peak. So this is something that is not found in a general vanilla extract that maybe another brand is using for fragrance. So the harvesting is much more controlled and therefore what we actually see in the finished product is a bioactive molecule. So now what I don't know is how much more impressive a vanilla extract is versus other antioxidants. That's something that's you know more proprietary to Chanel. 
But my point in discussing this is that there is actually a level of effort in the production of this product. So it's not just an off the shelf thing. I also love a fast absorbing essence. And although this is a milky texture, it's very, it is quite fluid and kind of absorbs in the skin pretty quickly. So it's not especially moisturizing. It's more of a refreshing hydrating essence with just like a tiny hint of nourishment. And I found it to be quite skin calming and just enjoyable to use. Now in terms of a more affordable and still very solid runner up that kind of has a similar fluid, milky, but refreshing texture is the one from Astura, if I'm saying the brand right. This is their Addo Barrier Hydro Essence, and I think they've done a really good job designing this. I'm pretty sure their moisturizer gets a lot of the love on social media, but the essence is actually really nice. So if you want something that's designed to support hydration and kind of combat dehydration, then I think this is a good option to check out. Plus it's another brand that is supported by a more Pacific science. So there's just a level of trust I have in that, that they're not just throwing a bunch of things together and you know, for popularity. And the last category is best acne toner or kind of best acne treatment and for this the dr dennis gross um, what do they call it the alpha beta two percent bha liquid breakout solution i think they've done a super good job with this one of my pet peeves with salicylic acid is a lot of brands sort of steer away from using alcohol because you know alcohol has a whole bad reputation on social media but i actually think alcohol is a super key ingredient especially in boosting the function of selected ingredients and alcohol and salicylic acid are a match made in heaven because of the use of alcohol, this absorbs so much nicer. It's not oily and not slippy. And I think it actually makes this toner essence perform a lot better. Outside of that, this is also just a generally stacked formula. So there's a lot of extra kind of support ingredients included. And it has one of those pressed down pumps. So it makes sort of application convenient, mainly if you're using like a cotton pad. Now this does contain 2% salicylic plus the alcohol. And I think there are some other acids as well. So this is not, a, so this is not a fluffy product. It's quite intense. Um, so that's why I sort of suggest it more for chronic acne. Now I do have a backup option here, which is the Build Skincare A Gel. This isn't a toner texture, but I do consider it still a prep step product. Um, and what I like about A Gel is that it is designed maybe for more easily sensitized skin. It uses 1% salicylic acid. It doesn't have alcohol, but they have balanced out the rest of the formula. So there's no slippiness or oiliness. It actually feels super plush and silky. I think one of the best textures I've ever used for a salicylic acid serum but it is not as intense as the Dr. Dennis Gross. So I consider this more for general maintenance or if you just want to help with pore clarity and just general texture on the skin and you don't need so much power. I actually use this one a lot on my neck because I really struggle with ingrown hairs and things. That's just like a forever battle and I'm not at a perfect spot with that yet because um, my neck is very sensitive, but I'm able to integrate a gel at least a few times a week, which helps. And just as a side note, although this is called a gel, the A stands for active. Some people think the A is like a retinoid, but this is definitely a BHA gel. That's the end of this list, which was my summary of sort of best prep step products. I think the next category will be serums. If you have any questions about anything I spoke about, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.